It's been 365 days and counting since Taliban forces took control of Afghanistan. 365 days since women began to lose their freedoms. The freedom to choose what to wear, where to travel, whether to study, whether to work. Restrictions imposed by the de facto government have been harsh, but Afghan women have not given up the will to shape their own destinies. And we at Women for Women International have not given up our role to support them to do so. I will never forget August 15th, 2021. U.S. and other international troops began to leave after decades of war, and Taliban forces swept across the country and into Kabul. The speed at which it happened was shocking. I remember calling our team in Afghanistan, who are all Afghan nationals. I remember the panic in the messages they left us. We are very afraid. Believe me, um, I hide my all the documents, education and, and work documents in, in our old stove and in, in garbage. Because if Taliban came and search my home, he couldn't find anything that that I am educated woman and I work for. When I went out of home, I had more fear. In the home, I was feeling much better, but out of home, there was more fear in my heart. I was thinking that uh, how I can hide myself. Our teams work tirelessly around the clock, getting all of our staff on evacuation lists and pleading with governments to help them. Whilst we're able to get a few of our staff and their families out of the country, millions of Afghan women remain. The de facto government promised to respect human rights, but they didn't. Today, women cannot travel freely without a male relative. Girls are not allowed to attend secondary schools. Many women have been denied permission to work or study. While international troops left, we stayed. Like other NGOs, we had to restrict our operations for safety reasons. But our team still found ways to continue to serve women. We began to provide psychosocial training to our staff and to participants, either by group phone calls or wherever possible in person in women's own homes. So many of them have told us how important and meaningful this connection was during the most stressful period in their lives. Due to the incredible outpouring of support from all of you, we were able to provide $80 per family during the depths of winter when people needed it most. The women told us they needed food to feed their families. So we found ways to procure and distribute kitchen, garden, and poultry kits so they could grow their own food and earn an income to support their families. We knew we would have to adapt our program focus less explicitly on women's rights and more on economic and health issues. We are so grateful to our amazing team there, who even while dealing with their own trauma, have been able to figure out and adapt to new ways of working. It is due to their resilience and their courage that we are now reaching over 2,000 women in 12 training centers. We've opened up almost all of our old training centers and expanded into two new provinces. But the situation in Afghanistan continues to be dire. Earlier in June, a devastating earthquake hit Afghanistan, its deadliest in two decades, killing thousands of people. And on top of that, the devastating war in Ukraine has diverted resources and the world's attention, as well as increased prices, making it so difficult for people to make it day to day. While some international aid is flowing into the country, Millions of dollars have been frozen and sanctions continue to affect ordinary men and women, worsening the humanitarian and economic crisis. It has been 365 days and counting with insufficient action by the international community. It is time to invest in Afghan women's leadership. It is time to support them in building the future that they dream of. Act with Afghan women now. Donate or sign the petition at womenforwomen.org.